Afternoon Wealth Hustlers, Tyrone Keys back at you with another episode of the Wealth Hustles YouTube channel. Before we get started, we got a really good episode here, a really good uh, show today that we're going to talk about uh, one of the asset classes, paper. And we're going to specifically talk about stock. But before I get into that, I want to just mention uh, somebody said to me, you know, your content is good. We, we follow Twitter, Facebook, and we subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, it's, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not exciting. Well, I am not talking about the latest celebrity gossip. I'm not talking about, um, you know, I'm not getting people's blood boiling with the latest political news. Um, I'm talking about your money. I'm talking about how to build a financial legacy for your family. I think that's extremely exciting myself. Uh, no car chases, no explosions or anything like that. Uh, but when you think about the power of what a financial legacy can do to transform generations, uh, to me, I'm very passionate about that and it's very exciting. And that reminded me, um, when you look at people like, say, John Paul Getty, Joe Kennedy, who's the father of the whole Kennedy clan. Uh, when you look at people like that, you can see the power of generational wealth. Getty, Kennedy, and many, many others um, have done it and are doing it today. And put together financial plans based on their economic education that will benefit generations of their family. Look at the Kennedys. I mean, do any of these guys work a real job? I mean, like, you know, do they? And that's not, uh, I'm not being funny with that. I think it's great if you can set your children and grandchildren up to where they can actually say, you know, I want to, I want to, I'm free now to create. I'm free to decide what I want to be in life not based on money, okay? That's powerful and very exciting to me. So I uh, want to encourage everybody who is a wealth, hustle, a wealth hustler, soldier in the war on poverty, financial freedom fighter, to uh, just think about the excitement you'll feel when you're able to look back and see that you've benefited generations of your family, not just with financial resources, but also with the economic knowledge that you pass on. So let's get into it. All right, we've got five asset classes. Now, traditionally, there are four. We at the Wealth Hustle have added a fifth. The five asset classes are as follows. There is paper, stocks, bonds, insurance policies, etc. There are commodities, gold, silver, uh, oil, wheat, cattle. There's real estate, uh, rental real estate, uh, capital gain real estate, commercial, residential, farmland, and then there are businesses. Now, when I say businesses, these are businesses that you not only have an ownership interest in, but that you manage as well. Now, you have an ownership interest in a company when you buy a stock, but you don't have a management interest. When we talk about the business asset class, we're talking about businesses you have an ownership and management stake in. And then the fifth asset class is the absolute most important one. It's you. It's your good health, uh, physical, emotional, intellectual, your health. Without those things, none of those other asset classes matter. So today we're going to focus on the paper side of the equation, specifically stocks. Now, before you go out and buy any asset class, be it a stock, a, a uh, gold or real estate, anything, before you do that, you have to have done your research. You have to build a methodology around how to invest in whatever it is you're investing in. The hot stock tip is bull, okay? A lot of people, a lot of people go with that. You know, they ask a coworker, hey, you got a hot stock tip? People ask me all the time, what stocks are you investing in? I do not, I, I never recommend specific stocks. In fact, 
I'm going to talk about one of the stocks that I own. I am not recommending you buy it. If you have it, I'm not recommending you sell it. You need to do your own research and come to that determination on your own. And we're going to talk today about how you go about doing some of that research. Now, first of all, in the way of research, I want you, I'm going to repost this and I'm probably, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it in the, uh, I'm going to put it in this video in the, uh, not the comment section, but the description. I'm going to put the link to Preston Fish's uh, Buffett Books Value Investing video series. It's a YouTube video series. It's 13 episodes. You are going to want to take 12 days. I say 12 because one of the videos is kind of uh, introductory. But you're going to want to take 12 solid days with a notebook and a computer and sit down and go through this video series on YouTube. I'm going to link to it. Value investing is the investment met the stock investment methodology that Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger use. They are the owners of Berkshire Hathaway. They are world renowned as being two of the best uh, stock investors in the history of stocks. Uh, they learned, well, Buffett learned from a guy named Ben Graham. Ben Graham has a book out I shared on the uh, Facebook channel, Facebook uh, Live. Uh, some time ago. The book's called The Intelligent Investor. Pick it up. I'm going to warn you. The Intelligent Investor is it's tough reading, especially if you're just getting into this. I've read it several times. But again, this is your money we're talking about. This is a legacy that you're trying to build of not just financial resources, but intellectual capital that you can pass on as well. Because it's not just enough to pass on money to successive generations. Statistics state that fortunes are usually dissipated by the third generation. And the reason for that is because people do not have the financial acumen, the economic education down the line to hold on to that money and grow it into more money. We see this with athletes and lottery winners, okay? People who don't have the economic education and financial acumen, they get into a situation where they get a whole lot of money, okay? And they go and they still practice poor and middle class financial thinking. They go out, they purchase stuff, okay? There was an article, I posted it in the Twitter feed. Go to the Wealth Hustle on Twitter. Actor Nicolas Cage this man made over $150 million in his career, and he blew it on. He bought castles. He bought uh, a, a Lamborghini that used to belong to the Shah of Iran, a dinosaur skull. I mean, dude, I mean, I didn't see in that list, I didn't see any income-producing assets that he purchased. And now you see Nicolas Cage in all types of crazy movies because it's like he needs a paycheck, Okay. Don't be Nicolas Cage. Don't be these athletes who are broke five years after they leave the league. Okay, and don't be these lottery winners who, you know, the, the first uh, person that won the lot, lotto in Maryland, this was many years ago, uh, she, she's broke. She doesn't have the money anymore, and it's tragic. The thing that separates them from the John Paul Gettys, Kennedys, Michael Jordans, Oprah Winfrey's of the world is an economic education. So here we go. All right. In the way of researching stocks, I already said link to the I've linked to the value investing lessons from Preston Fish. Now another thing that you can do is you can go on to Investopedia. I'll link to that as well. dot com. Investopedia will give you some uh, insight into various uh, trends. Uh, insight into various companies as well. So mark that one down. Now, from the standpoint of actually going out and once you have figured out what your investment methodology is going to be, let's say it's value investing, then you're going to have to figure out how to invest. Now, I learned how to read the stock tables when I was 10, but I didn't have any money to invest in the stock market for some time after that. And when I did 
finally get a little bit of money uh, in my early 20s. I think I was 20. I invested in a Midwestern uh, power company, um, utility. It was a utility company. And I purchased the shares directly from that company. Now, when you do that, that's called the dividend reinvestment plan or a drip. One of the ways you can purchase stock is directly from the company. Now, all companies don't offer this, but some of the big, uh, very noteworthy companies do, not all. Johnson & Johnson offers it, Microsoft offers it. Now, with Microsoft, uh, and with I think most of the companies are gonna require you to, they have a third-party vendor set up to handle it. And so, in the case of Microsoft, for example, they're using what's called their transfer agent, uh, and that transfer agent is American Stock Transfer. They actually administer Microsoft's dividend reinvestment plan. Now, because Microsoft pays a dividend, and this is, a, I'm very fond of dividend paying stocks because you're actually receiving income. Net worth is great, but income, that's, you know, that's that cash flow piece. So now, with a stock, when you receive a dividend, it is akin to, if we compare it to real estate, that asset class, when you rent a prop, when you own a property and you rent it out, you receive income. So you can think of the income, the dividend income, well, the dividend as income, okay? Because that's what it is. But what you do with the dividend reinvestment plan is it is automatically, the dividend is automatically reinvested in the company, purchasing more shares of that company. Now, that also is a uh, technique that Warren Buffett is very fond of. So follow the leader, okay? Don't reinvent the wheel. There's no, no need to. So you're not taking that income and putting it in your pocket. You're taking it, and you're rolling it right back over into the company, a well-managed company, like in this case, Microsoft, and you're buying more stock with it, okay? That becomes very powerful. In the beginning, it's slow to start, but once it starts compounding, then, you know, you're going to see, you're going to, you, pardon the pun, it's going to pay dividends. All right, so direct uh, dividend reinvestment plans are a direct way to purchase the stock directly from the company. And usually when you do this, there are no fees. You're purchasing, purchasing it directly from the company. So you can avoid fees in that way in most cases. Another site that you might want to check out for the beginning investor is a site called stash dot, uh, stashinvesting.com. Now, what Stash is all about is they have some financial education on the site, and they want you to invest as little as $5. Now, I'll tell you, most stocks you can't purchase uh, on a fractional basis. So when they say uh, invest $5, it's like a, a sweetener to get you interested. But in actuality, if you are on this channel and you are a financial freedom fighter, soldier in the war on poverty, then you know that you've got to invest a hell of a lot more than $5. You've got to take a look at your budget and you've got to say, how much is building this legacy for my family worth to me? And then you've got to, you know, act accordingly in terms of figuring out how much you want to uh, invest every month or every week. Even if you get paid every week, maybe you want to slide a little off into a kitty so you can, you know, make a, a regular investment. You definitely want to do that. So don't get enticed by, oh, it's only five dollars, you know, less than a cup of coffee. You can invest. Yeah. And by the time you're 325 years old, you have you will have made your first million. So, um, you know, the way money works is it goes to where it is treated best and the compounding effect of money really is very, very powerful. So you want to give the money as much of an advantage as you can by figuring out how much you can invest per month, per regular time period and doing that. Okay, so Stash gives you a, a, a way to go on and you can invest. Now, Stash does have a fee associated with it. Uh, it has a flat fee. And that's another reason why you want to invest 
as much as you can because you want that fee to be minimal in terms of your overall investment. You don't want to get killed with fees. Warren Buffett says taxes and fees are the two most detrimental things out there uh, to your wealth building. So want to stay away from fees. Check out stashinvest.com. Acorns is another one. Now their um, skilo, their methodology is somewhat similar. They take your spare change and they roll it into you know a pot of money and then they invest it based on what you direct them to invest it in. Again, this is the spare change thing. Oh, I can invest with just my spare change. The way they do it is they hook it to a bank account, a debit account. And let's say you go out and you make a purchase for $8.50 and you have told Acorns to round up to the nearest dollar. So that eight fifty purchase, they will take another fifty cents to round it up to the nearest dollar, which is nine dollars. They'll take fifty cents and they'll put it in that little bucket for you. And over time, you have a lot of money to invest. That's the theory. But again, this is a great way to get started and get your feet wet. This is training wheel stuff. Stash, uh, invest, Acorns, and the next one I'm going to talk about. But at some point you are going to want to get, you know, a discount brokerage account at um, one of the banks or um, TD Ameritrade or something like that. We'll talk about that in in a later episode. Okay, so that's how uh, Acorns does their thing. And they have some educational um, items on here as well. Robinhood, they're the next one. Robinhood is... uh, Again, they charge a flat fee under a certain amount, and they do offer some educational uh, information on the site, and you can go in and you can purchase, uh, you can actually purchase as little as one share of stock on all of these sites, okay? Even in the discount brokerages, you can purchase as little as one share. Now, why is this important? Because if you have a stock that, let's say, XYZ company is trading at $50 a share, There used to be a time in this country uh, and in this world where you had to buy what were called round lots of stock. Okay, so uh, if you, uh, what a round lot was, was 100 shares. So if you were forced to buy 100 shares of a $50 stock, then you had to come up with $5,000. So most people, for most people, that was prohibitive. It was cost prohibitive. They didn't have it. So they were kind of locked out of the stock market. Uh, But now that prohibition no longer exists um, on purchasing less than a round lot. You can purchase one share, okay? And uh, that will allow you to, you know, get in there and start making some, you know, making some money and seeing your money work for you, okay? Now, I'm not suggesting that if you can afford five shares, you just buy one. Once you do your research, then go in and feel comfortable with buying as many shares as you can. Now, value investing also dictates that you uh, hold on to the investment. You don't trade. This, this whole Wealth Hustle platform is not about trading. Trading is when companies or individuals go in to a stock and they might stay in there for hours or days uh, they're, they're investing large amounts of money, and so when they have minute increases in the value of the stock, then they could trade out of it. That might happen in a few hours. Now, they're able to do that successfully because they've got a lot of money, and so the fees and taxes kind of you know work differently for them because they're able to do things like carried interest if they're a hedge fund and all types of exotic um, methodologies that help them mitigate some of those circumstances that would adversely affect you. So we don't trade here at the Wealth Hustle. We invest. Now, Warren Buffett, invest uh, for the long term. Now, in investing for the long term, you cannot just set it and forget it. You have got to research your companies. you got to keep a sharp eye out on what's going on with your companies. We have a video on the channel, uh, the previous video to this one, how to read the Wall Street Journal. Check it out. That's one way you can keep a constant eye on what's going on with your companies. Another way is you can watch channels like Bloomberg 
uh, CNBC, Fox Business, okay? Step away from the politics and, you know, CNNs and MSNBCs. That's not putting money in your pocket. One way to keep track of what's going on in the financial markets is to watch a financial channel or to, and rather, to read the financial periodicals like the Wall Street Journal. Like I said, we did the video where you're going to see exactly how to read the Wall Street Journal. Yes, there is a way to do it. So watch that video. Now, another thing that you're going to find, and this is what I was talking about earlier. I have an investment in a company called Qualcomm. Qualcomm makes, they make computer chips, okay, that go in your cell phone and, you know, tablet and all that good stuff. Now, this is an interesting case study that I want you to really pay attention to. First of all, this is Qualcomm's notice of 2018 annual meeting of stockholders and proxy statement. Now, again, you got to read this, okay? If you're serious about building a financial legacy, the more of these you read, the more comfortable you will get, the more you will understand, okay? This goes over the board of directors, talks about who they are, goes over some of the financials, talks about what they're going to, you know, get to and how, what, what kind of year 2017 was. So when we talk about long-term investing, Qualcomm is a stock that I've owned for some time now. I did the research on them uh, for maybe about three or four months before I actually made a purchase, okay? I assessed it out in terms of the value investment. Uh, looked at their dividend, okay, did some long-term projections. Qualcomm, after I um, started investing in it, and I had a set time frame that I was going to buy shares of Qualcomm. And almost at the end of that time frame, I got hit with, well, Qualcomm got hit with some news that they were being sued by Apple. It's, um... You can read about it on, on the internet, trademarks, and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, I did not panic. I did not allow my emotions to rule and say, I got to get out of this stock. You know, I don't want to lose everything. I stayed in. The stock did drop. When it dropped, I was comfortable with that because I was going to buy more anyway. So I did just that. I bought more. Uh, legal wranglings continue to go back and forth between Apple and Qualcomm, uh, they're in the midst of, Qualcomm is in the midst of trying to acquire a smaller chip maker. Um, all kinds of things are going on, but you've got to stick with the news, figure out what's going on with your companies, read the financial statements, okay? Understand what contracts they're getting, and don't panic. Don't involve your emotions, uh, again, this is not a recommendation to buy Qualcomm or to sell Qualcomm. It's just my personal experience with the company. Um, so I stuck stuck with Qualcomm, have not sold it, and in the fourth, early fourth quarter of last year, Broadcom, another chip maker, announced that they wanted to buy Qualcomm. Stock went back up, and it stayed up ever since. Okay, on that news. Now, Qualcomm, it's, in my opinion, is a good standalone company. They produce a product that uh, we all need. We're using the product now, you and I, if you're watching this video. You, there's a Qualcomm chip in the mix somewhere. Uh, there are other aspects of Qualcomm that make it well-positioned for the future, including a new technology called the Internet of Things, where they're going to have everything from your razor blade to your refrigerator, you know, communicating with the Internet. So, oh, and driverless cars also, that, that, that's a big technology uh, for that Qualcomm deals in. So there we have it. You've got to do your research. This is my, one of my books, that composition notebook, where I do my actual stock analysis. And most of the stocks that I analyze do not make the cut. Uh, based on some of the metrics that Preston Fish talks about in the video series, debt to equity. You will you will learn all of this. Current ratio, PE ratio, price to book, dividend, margin of safety. You're going to learn how to calculate all of these. So get the get the composition notebook, get your computer ready, 
watch the watch that video series okay so that's all we have for right now in terms of the paper assets stocks we will get deeper we'll talk uh, about some other aspects of stocks uh, including we'll go over the price to earnings ratio price to book those discrete areas of stock analysis we'll go over those uh, in a later episode we're also going to look at other asset classes if you go to the Facebook channel I always put up uh, some videos about real estate what types of real estate uh, we are investing in um, and these are ugly houses one had a biohazard in fact I just recorded the video on Facebook live for the biohazard house earlier this morning now it's been clean so it's not you know you don't have to worry about seeing something disgusting but buying these houses low and either selling them for profit for capital gain or holding on to them renting and getting that income property is appreciating while that's happening in many cases okay all your questions send them to us here at the wealth hustle we got some very exciting stuff coming up we're going to talk in um, probably the next episode about a gentleman who made no more than twenty five thousand dollars a year but he had an economic education and what he was able to do with that money and we're going to compare that to another gentleman who made millions of dollars and he's living under a bridge right now or he was the last time that I read about him and that's very tragic subscribe to this channel like us on Facebook and follow the wealth hustle on Twitter hustle on